Hey my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you five amazing things that you can do with LUTs. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria, and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thanks for that, let's get started. So as you know, I recently released my free LUT pack, you can still download it, and also the special offer for my 10,000 subscriber celebration is still going on, take advantage of that if you want to, completely optional. Today I'm going to show you five things that you can do completely with the free pack. I'm only going to use LUTs from the free pack. And the first thing that I want to show you, because a lot of people ask me, what are LUTs? How can I use them? How can I import them or install them in Affinity Photo? So the way you are using LUTs is you go down here to an adjustment layer and choose the LUT adjustment like this. And then you can load a LUT like this and you can see these are the 10 free LUTs in the free pack that you can download right now if you want to. Let's choose for example Atomic Pink. It's pretty hardcore change and for the explanation of what a LUT is doing you can see it right here the LUT is changing the colors and the contrast of the image. It's not doing anything else. It's not going to sharpen or blur or do any other kind of effects. It's just about the color and the contrast. And contrast is the brightness and the darkness. So that is what is changing. Okay. And you can add them to presets if you want. So you can see here we have a little button here. It says add preset. You can click on that. And then you can enter a name. Atomic pink you have to enter a name by hand there is no batch import for LUTs um, sadly but you can do it like that so you can import your favorite LUTs. How do you find them? You go over here where it says adjustments and there you have the LUTs. You have a lot of other adjustments so you have to scroll down it says LUT here and there you also have the name now that I just entered atomic pink. So this is just the explanation. Now come the five awesome things you can do because a LUT is not just for color grading. You can do more with that if you get a little fancy. So this is what we're going to do today. So the first thing, of course, that you can do is you can create a mask for your LUT. So let's create a cool design with these LUTs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle over my um, screen and this is empty because I have the fill color empty and the stroke I have set up to the color uh, black and then also I have here the stroke thickness and by the way if you want to have these sharp corners here you need to click on the joints here meter joint not the bevel joint not the round joint the meter joint so you get a pointy joint on the edge okay so I will duplicate this real quick there we go and then I will resize that I'm gonna hope my um, I'm gonna hope my control key resize it because I want this inside here and I'm gonna now set the fill color to black and I'm gonna set the stroke to um, no stroke or transparent there we go like that this is what I want to have so let's adapt the size a little bit like this okay so now I'm gonna select both of them with my shift key. There we go. And control G to group them. And then I'm gonna hold my control key and click on the layer to create a selection. By the way, uh, let's undo that. So uh, control D to deselect. I want to move this actually more in the middle of my picture. There we go, like this. Okay, again. Control and then click onto the group so this creates a selection and then click down here on mask layer. So this will create a mask layer from the selection. That's important. Now you can't see anything. So we will hide our group and then we will move the mask onto our LUT. And again to deselect we hit Control D on our keyboard. So now we have this here and you can see that now we have applied a mask to our LUT. So the LUT is only affecting this part of the picture, which already is an interesting look. And now we can, for example, put a text in here. Let's write happy because it's a great day. I wrote it inside of the LUT. That's not okay. There we go. Let's resize the text a little bit so it's somehow filling this 
And that already looks pretty cool. So this is what we can do. Um, now, another thing that you can do is, of course, to a lot, you can apply effects if you want to. For example, Y brands um, or other kind of changes. You can use an HSL or recolor filter to change the color, stuff like that. Um, so what we want to do here is we want to create an adjustment layer for Y brands in this case. Here it says Y brands, as you can see. And if I move this, you can see that this will change the colors for the LUT, but also for the rest of the pictures. It's not very visible, but if you look down here on the cars, you can see that they get really brightly yellow. Maybe we don't want to do that. Maybe we only want to adjust the LUT. Now, what you cannot do is apply the vibrance only to the LUT filter. So if you drag this in here, nothing is going to happen because there are no colors in the LUT. The LUT is a color adjustment, but itself doesn't have any colors. So what you have to do instead is that you select the LUT and then hit Control G on your keyboard. So you're creating a group. And now you can move the vibrance adjustment into the group on top of your LUT like this. So it's in the group. And it's only affecting stuff inside of the group and it's on top of the LUT layer. And now if I go in here and make changes, you can say that this is still affecting the cars, which it should not do. That's very strange. Um, what's going on? Ah, I have to drag the mask out on top of all the other layers. So now it's only affecting the LUT. Sorry. Okay, but that was a good mistake to make so you can see what the hell is going on. This the hell is going on. All right. Okay, so now that we have fixed that, we will go on with applying another LUT because you can use multiple LUTs on top of each other in certain occasions like this one because we apply a certain LUT to a certain area of the picture and then a different LUT to a different part of the picture. So let's create a new adjustment layer, LUT adjustment. There we go. And we will load from our free pack that you can download. Buying it is completely optional, like the premium version is completely optional. Um, we click on, on, on black and white, but yellow. So everything is becoming black and white and only the yellow colors remain in the pictures you can see here so only the cars uh, the caps down here are yellow and the traffic signs and over here there is a little umbrella for a store stuff like that is still yellow so we probably want to have a little bit more vibrance in that too so again we are going to create um, a vibrance we can now apply this to all of the picture because the rest is black and white so we don't really have much of a change in here and you can see here that now this is bringing out beautifully the yellow colors while the rest while the rest of the picture is staying black and white and this gives us a very nice contrast for our um, image so this is the second part you can apply multiple LUTs which you can combine LUTs and actually we're even gonna do more LUTs so I want to have a little bit a hint of blue in there so I'm creating even one more LUT on this load and we are going to use um, the flat blue moon LUT for that so this is creating um, a yellow color in here but we want to have it in a different way and this is another trick that you can use with LUTs you can use blend mode with LUTs to give them different kind of looks different kind of functions so in this case we are going to select soft light so you can see the yellow is coming back and we will reduce the opacity here a little bit because we only want to have a hint of blue and the reason why i want to have a hint of blue in this design is because the background of our text is pink and the contrast of pink is blue so the pink is coming forward even more into my direction and making it stand out more and at the same time we have a very nice look for our 
um, image overall. Okay, cool. So the next thing you can do, another trick that you can do is you can also paint on a LUT. So I will create in here. Um, let's see, what do I want to do? I will actually duplicate this LUT here. Let's duplicate that. And I will put this outside of our group. And now I will, with this LUT selected, go up here to layer and invert. And now you can't see it anymore because the mask there is on every adjustment layer is a built in mask. The mask has been inverted. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to take our brush and you can see right now doesn't do anything. So we have to switch our color over to black and it still doesn't do anything. Now let's switch it back to white. Aha, the white didn't have any color. So we have to fix that, give it a white color. There we go. And now you can see that in here, I actually can see on my brush that the LUT is affecting that area. I'm not painting yet, so it's not applied to it. Uh, let's set this maybe to 80% hardness. And so now, for example, I could paint a little hard up here with my LUT effect, as you can see here, like that. So you can paint a lot onto a picture and you can imagine a lot of different uses when you use it with a portrait, when you want to have a certain object stand out, stuff like that. Painting onto a lot as a painted mask is really, really powerful. All right, what else can you do? Um, so we have created this look now. Now I want to show you something completely different. So I will copy the layer on the bottom and I will pull it up to the top so the rest is hidden behind that. It's not completely on the top. Now it's on the top. Okay, because the last trick, it needs an empty picture to show you what is actually going on. And I will again create a LUT layer. And so you see it really well. I will again use the atomic pink layer. And now what you can do with this, and this is also really cool because like I said, every adjustment layer has a mask built into it. And what you can do with the mask is, of course, you can create a gradient. So that means you can go over here to your gradient tool down here and you can just click and drag and this will create a gradient. And you can imagine how powerful this is, for example, when you want to have a pink sky. In this case, of course, we have buildings that go up into the sky, so we don't have a clean sky, but you can see that we still can create a gradient. And this is not completely um, fading out our LUT effect because up here in the gradient, the color is actually gray. If we turn this to a black color, you can see that this will fade out the LUT completely and only in the lower part we would have um, the LUT effect now. And of course, this is working wherever the white edge is of your um, gradient. So you can move it over here or over here or whatever you want to do with your gradient. And you can also switch the gradient type, of course. For example, you can make it radial. Let's reverse this. So you click here and reverse. And so now um, we have the black dot in the middle and the white dot on the outside. So for example, you can create an effect like this where it's getting gradually more pink on the outside or more dark on the outside. And of course, because this is a, a adjustment filter, you can still go in here and load any other kind of LUT if you want to, is you're not fixed to just this one LUT. So that is a really cool thing you can do, for example, like this, um, which is my day to night LUT. Like I said, you can download that for free and it creates kind of a vignette, but with a blue tone with kind of a night shade, a night coming in, growing onto this one point. So really interesting things you can do here. So you can see LUTs can be a lot of fun. They can be very powerful and it can be a lot more than just color grading. Have fun with that, play around with that. If you have more great ideas, I want to know about them in the comments. Or if you want to see a certain tutorial, let me know. I will see what I can do for you and hopefully create it for you as soon as possible. See you soon. Have a good day. Bye.